thank you for joining us for Church Online today. If you're watching with us on Church Online or on Facebook, then please drop us a hi and a hello. We would love to connect with you. It is great to join with you over this Christmas season, but you know, if Christmas has not been easy for you, we just want to send you a big hug and say that we're praying for you and that we love you and that Jesus cares about you in the good times and the difficult times. And kids, if you're there and you've got all your presents around them, I can't see them, but hold them up to the screen. We would love to see what you've had this Christmas time. We miss you all and we love you all so much. I'm going to hand over actually to myself and I'm going to do you a few pr promos. Thank you. This new year, we want to encourage you to engage with us as we look to read the Bible together. We're going to be using a Bible reading plan on you version called Word Live. And it's there to give you a little bit of encouragement. It's there to give you some practical tips and also to encourage you to go deeper with God. So look out for the link. Go and see if you can find it yourself. And please engage with us this new year. Let's commit to reading our Bibles. Let's commit to going deeper with God together. Thank you. We want to encourage you to engage in 14 days of prayer and fasting. It starts on the 1st of February and runs through to the 14th of February. And we're going to be focusing on who God is. And each day you'll get a daily devotion with a different name of God and talking about how we can stand on who God is in and through our circumstances. We're going to pray together. We're going to believe together. There's going to be some Zoom prayer meetings. There's also going to be a prayer and worship night that's going to be on Church Online. So please engage with us, please get involved. And if you'd like any help or support, or you've got questions about how do you fast? When do you fast? What do I fast? Then please get in touch with us. We would love to journey with you as you fast with us. And we're believing for great things. We're believing for breakthrough. We're believing for you, for your personal circumstances. We're believing for as a church to see salvation and breakthrough. And we're believing for change in our local community, in our nation and in our world. So please join with us as we pray and fast this 2021. Thank you. Children weep no more Hope is on the horizon Weary world behold Your promised Messiah Angels let your song begin is born in Bethlehem. Here comes heaven. Sin awake no more. Love has broken the silence. Come let
to worship God together. Can I encourage you this next week? Get your praise worship music on and keep praising him. Keep lifting his name high and singing to him because he is worthy of all of our praise. We want to give you an opportunity now to be able to give. And this Christmas season, I hope you've not missed the reason for the season that God sent his son into this world. He gave us the greatest gift that we could have eternal life through Jesus' birth, death and resurrection. So today we want to give you an opportunity to give just like God gave to us that we can give of ourselves too, that we can follow that example God gave. So if you're watching on Church Online, you can click the link there and you you can give otherwise you can go onto our website and you can also give there too thank you so much for your generosity this year and we're believing that we have a generous God who's going to provide everything that we need for 2021 so thank you so much for your generosity and we pray that God will bless you this Christmas time and into 2021 I'm going to hand over to Tim now. Tim is one of our trustees and he is an amazing man. And I just want to encourage you as he as he speaks to us this morning about finding the best in 2020. He's got to challenge himself there with this message. But I believe that what he's got to say to us will encourage us, will inspire us and will even change the way we think about this last year. So listen in, make some notes. Over to you, Tim. Hey, I hope you had a great Christmas. You know, we're here in this period of time between Christmas and New Year. And, you know, as I'm talking to you now, it's, it's nearly the end of 2020. And I know that for many of us, 2020 has been quite a difficult year. It's certainly been a different kind of year than we were expecting. It hasn't necessarily been the year that we thought it was going to be. And I think it was in June, the first time that I heard somebody say, I think it was in a meeting at work, someone just said, oh, roll on 2021, eh? You know, let's get this year done. I've had enough of 2020. I can't wait for the year to end. And I think that's been a temptation for many of us that to almost write this year off and be done and let's just go ahead and, and head into the next. And, you know, for, for many of us, this may have been a case of focusing on just getting through, getting through the situation that we're in. For some of us, it may have just been getting to Christmas and, and now we've had Christmas. And guess what? It's still 2020 and 2021 is still to come. And, you know, there, there are more challenges ahead, most likely. But this morning, in the time that we've got here, still in 2020, here's what we're going to focus on. We're going to look at taking the best from 2020 and heading into 2021 with purpose, but taking the best of what we can from this year. Because here's the thing. You know, whatever you've been through this year, God knows. Whatever you've been through this year, God loves you. And whatever you've been through this year, God can still use it for good. So let's take the best from 2020. Tech, we're going to take this as our principle. Isaiah 40, what, 43, Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19 says this. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. God is doing a new thing. Can I tell you God is doing a new thing? And he's not waiting for 2021. He's not waiting for new year. God is doing a new thing right here and now in 2020 as we look forward to the next year and look back on what has gone before. You know, I want to look this morning at a very famous passage of scripture and we're gonna to get to that 
in a second. It's something that you'll be familiar with. It's a story that you will likely um, have read before. If you've never read it before, we're going to read it through together. But can I just say that this morning, God has a new thing for you. He has something new to do in you and through you and for you. Let's embrace it together this morning. But we're going to look at a very famous story. We're going to look at something that um, is taught in Sunday school classes up and down the country. It's taught in various schools. It's taught in all sorts of different contexts and and situations. It's the feeding of the 5,000. And it's a scripture that some of you will be very, very familiar with. And actually, it's, it's one that occurs in all four of the Gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, which are tell, different writers telling the story of Jesus. And all of them felt that this story was important enough to include it in their narrative of who Jesus was and what he came to do and, and how everybody kind of fits in with that. And you know, when something's mentioned in the Bible multiple times, sometimes I wonder whether God is trying to tell us something. Sometimes I wonder whether God is trying to tell us to pay attention to something, or sometimes I wonder whether God is trying to tell us to pay attention to lots of things. And we're going to have a look at this story and maybe approach it in a slightly different way than we have done before. Um, But I really want to encourage you to look with fresh eyes on this story. Now, the feeding of the 5,000 is a miracle. It's a working of the impossible. It is Jesus meeting the needs of people who are struggling, people who are tired, people who are hungry, people who are in a place where they didn't necessarily expect to be and where fulfillment seems a long way away. This is about God meeting those people at their point of need and Jesus doing the miraculous to allow that to happen. But surrounding this story, there's a set of circumstances and choices that can tell us something or some things about who Jesus is, about what he was there to do, and about how we can fit in with that or what we have to do with it. And can I tell you, there is nothing more important in life, right here and now, today, in 2020, in this moment, at this point, than knowing who Jesus is, understanding what he came to do, and what you have to do with it, and how you can fit in with it. And we're thinking this morning about 2020 and about what has happened, about what has been, about what might happen in the future. But regardless of what your focus is or what you're thinking about, what you're concerned about, what you're worried about, can I encourage you this morning to learn something new about who Jesus is, about what he came to do and about what you have to do with it and how you can get involved and what part you have to play in it. So let's read this story. We're going to look at Matthew. Now, it's told in all four Gospels. We're going to start in the Gospel of Matthew. We'll dip into the Gospel of John. We're going to give Mark and Luke a rest. But if you want to have a look at them, they do have slightly different focuses. We're going to focus on Matthew to start with. Matthew 14, verse 13 says this. As soon as John heard, uh, sorry, as soon as Jesus heard the news, stop. What news? You know, I don't know about you. I've had a fairly um, up and down relationship with the news this year. Um, it's been a bit of an interesting one. Um, we've had some great news that's occurred, whether it's you know celebrating the NHS, clapping for the NHS, some really good news stories have come out. There was Captain Tom who did his laps of the garden and I couldn't help but call him Major Tom in every conversation that I had, so I apologise to him uh, about that. Um, but you know, we've, we've had some really good news. We've also had some quite bad news. We've had all sorts of different news this year, you know, we've had good news, bad news, nine o'clock news, 10 o'clock news, eight o'clock news, fake news, national news, local news, no news, enough news for many of us. And I think for, for a lot of us, we reach saturation point with the news. I know that I did at various different points and, and for some of us, we may have had enough of the news. And for, for some of us, we, we've had bad news this year. For some of us, it's been the worst kind of news this year. And you know, that there are things that happen in life that evoke a reaction in us and evoke a response as they should. And for Jesus, this was that kind of news because the news was that his cousin, John the Baptist, had died, had been executed, had been beheaded. And you can see that earlier on in the chapter if you look back at it. But that was the news that Jesus heard. And he does this. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. You know, can I encourage you this morning? You you may have lost someone this year. You may have lost more than one person this year, nationally, internationally, 
we've lost many, many people this year that we weren't necessarily expecting to. Can I encourage you if you're in that situation? Jesus knows. Jesus understands. He knows what it's like to lose. He knows what it's like to have that response, to feel what you feel. He knows and he loves you and he is there for you. But as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. And that was Jesus' response. He heard the news and he wanted to be alone. He wanted to be on his own. He quite literally isolated himself. I find it interesting how terminology has changed this year. You know, terminology is a fascinating thing. This, this year for us has, has been a year of lockdown. It's been a year of restriction. It's been a year of self-isolation. And you know, so a lot of our language has been so negative and has been so um, focused in, in that area. But it's interesting because have you, have you noticed that um, you know, in life in general, some, historically, we haven't always needed help in isolating ourselves. You know, we haven't always needed help in shutting ourselves off from other people. The temptation is when life is hard to shut down, to, to restrict your interactions, to, to literally isolate yourself, even when it's not government mandated. And here's the thing, right? Jesus knows what that feels like. Jesus wanted to be on his own. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. That's a natural response to some situations. Jesus just wanted to be on his own. But Jesus had an experience that we don't always have. And this is what happened for Jesus. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. You know, Jesus had compassion on these people despite his own situation. He didn't want to be followed. He wanted to be on his own. And they followed him to his place of isolation and he had compassion on them. And this is the funny thing about this story, right? These people followed Jesus into the middle of nowhere. They followed him into a place of isolation, to a remote place, to a place where there was no food, where there was no place to rest. Why? Because of who Jesus was, because of what he had come to do and because of their perception of how they could get involved with it. Verse 15, we're going to carry on. It says, that evening the disciples came to him. So he'd been there with them all day. That evening the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that's not necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. And then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. You know, Jesus went to that place of isolation, to the remote place, knowing that people would follow him. Knowing that it was remote, isolated, cut off, that they'd be tired, hungry, fed up, and he may not even have wanted them to be there, but he still used it to provide a miracle. He still used it to provide for them. He still used it to show them who he was. He still used it to show them that they didn't have to be reliant on their physical circumstances. They didn't have to be reliant on what was going on around them. They didn't have to be reliant on what other people perceived to be the right place to be. They didn't have to be in the right place. They didn't have to be there at the right time. If they were with him, they had all that they needed. Because the one who was the bread of life, the water of life, the light of the world, was able to supply everything that they needed. He was able to demonstrate that to the disciples with their perception. He was able to demonstrate that to the people with their perception. He's able to demonstrate that to us through that, this story with our perception of our circumstances and our situation. You know, the place where Jesus is is not remote. The place where Jesus is, is not isolated. The place where Jesus is, is not a place where you have to feel hungry and unfulfilled. The place where Jesus is, is one where you can find all that you need. And that can be where you are 
right now, at the end of 2020, going into 2021. You know, you may feel like you're in a remote and isolated place at the moment. You may feel like 2020 has been a remote and isolated experience for you. Can I encourage you this morning, if you are with Jesus, you have everything that you need. Verse 19 carries on. It says, then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven and blessed them. And breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. And they all ate as much as they wanted. They all ate as much as they wanted. 5,000 people fed. That's a statistic. 2020 has been a year of statistics. Much like you may be sick of news, you may be sick of statistics. You may have felt a bit like a statistic this year, or, or sometimes maybe even that you're not even counted in the statistics, like your experience didn't count, that you were insignificant. Did you know that the 5,000 is a nominal figure? It's not an accurate statistic. It's not even a statistic that's inclusive of everybody. It didn't include women and children. For some reason, they were written out of the stats. They, were, they didn't make the cut. They didn't make the chart that charted the progress, the hunger of people. They weren't included. Why? Because they weren't significant. Maybe not to the government of the day. Maybe not to the historical record of the day. To Jesus, they were just as significant. Verse 20, they all ate as much as they wanted, whether they were included in the 5,000 or not. You know, you may have felt like a statistic, like your struggle didn't matter, or like you're just one of the crowd. You may even have felt like you, your voice didn't count, that you, you weren't heard this year. Jesus identifies you. Jesus recognises you. You know, you're not just a statistic with Jesus. Jesus is able to satisfy all of your needs, regardless of circumstance, situation, or who you are, where you are. We're going to skip to the Gospel of John. I said this was in four different Gospels. We're going to move to the Gospel of John because we're going to pick up on something else here. John 6, 11 to 13, a little bit of a crossover in the stories. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. Gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. Jesus desires that nothing should be wasted. You know, 2020 may have been a struggle may have felt like leftovers for you. It may have felt like scraps, like just kind of holding it together. I know it has felt like that for me at times. But with Jesus, nothing is wasted. You know, even in these last few days, in the limbo between Christmas and New Year, as we, we look back at 2020 and we look forward to 2021, nothing is wasted. God, God still wants to use this time. This time, in this weird kind of time period between Christmas and New Year, God wants to use it to speak to you. God wants to use it to transform your situation. God wants to use it to change your life. God wants to use it to change your relationships and your circumstances and your relationship with him. You know, we're late in 2020 and 2021 is calling, but Jesus has a miracle for you today. Jesus is still able to provide. Jesus is able to give you more than enough and he will pick up the pieces so that nothing is wasted. So how do we take the best from 2021? Three things very, very quickly. First thing, come to Jesus and come as you are. Wherever you may be, whatever situation you find yourself in, come to Jesus. Um, you may feel like you're in a place of isolation, right? Deuteronomy 31.8 says this, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. You may be in a place of fear. Isaiah 41.10 says this, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
You may be in a place of weariness. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus himself said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. You may be in a place of grief. Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 147 verse 3 says he heals, the wo- he heals the wounds of every shattered heart. You know, however you feel, whatever 21, 20, sorry, 2020 has held for you, whatever you've gone through this year, come to Jesus, come as you are. Number two, receive what he has to give you. Jesus has got so much that he wants to give you. You know, you're not a statistic to him. He's not constrained by your limitations. He's not constrained by your situation. He is able to meet your needs. So ask him and receive from him. Receive a gift from him, a bonus Christmas gift this year, something new and fresh in your life, a fresh wave of God's spirit is coming into your life. And this time between Christmas and New Year, God is doing a new thing in you. John 16, 24 says this, until now, you've not been bold enough to ask the Father for a single thing in my name. That is a word for somebody. Until now, you haven't asked God because you've been afraid to, because you haven't been bold enough, whether through fear of disappointment, or through not knowing what to ask. But the verse continues. Now you can ask and keep on asking him and you can be sure that you'll receive what you ask for and your joy will have no limits. Until now, you've not been bold enough to ask, but now you can. And you can keep on asking and be sure that you will receive what you ask for, and your joy will have no limits. You know, joy may have been in short supply for many of us this year, not with God. Joy is never in short supply with God. Joy is never in short supply with Jesus. Joy is there for you at every moment of every day, whether it is in difficulty or in trial, in hardship or in triumph and great times. Joy is God's gift for you today. We've just been through Christmas with all of the songs that sing joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy is here for you. Receive it this morning. Jesus came as the Prince of Peace. Receive it this morning. Jesus came as the light in the darkness. Receive his light, his truth, his freedom this morning. He has so many good gifts to give to you. So ask and you will receive. And number three, allow Jesus to pick up the pieces. You know, God doesn't see the world in the way that we do. He hasn't seen 2020 in the way that we have or the context that we have. He sees things in a different way. And that might be a comfort to you That might be a concern to you, but it's a fact. God has a different perspective than us. His ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. But here's the thing. 1 Corinthians 1.27 says this. God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. You know, there may be things that have happened this year that that you don't consider to be important, or that you've despised, or that you count as nothing at all. God is still able to use those things. It may seem impossible at this moment in time. It may seem difficult at this moment in time. It may be painful at this moment in time, but God is still able to use those things. 
to produce something that we did not anticipate, that we didn't expect, that we didn't look for, but that will result in his glory. So see that you pick up the pieces so that nothing is wasted and allow God to work all of these things for good. Come to Jesus, come as you are, receive what he has to give you and allow Jesus to pick up the pieces. I'm gonna pray for you this morning. Jesus, this day, God, as we close out 2020 and we look to 2021, we choose to recognize once again that you are our Lord and Savior, Jesus, that you are still on the throne. Jesus, that you are the conqueror. Jesus, that you came that we may have life and life in all its fullness. And God, we choose to recognize that we are not alone, that we have not been alone all the way through this year, that we are not on our own going into 2021, that you will never leave us, you never forsake us. And God, we choose to recognize that you are in control. Jesus, that you're able to give us everything that we need. And Jesus, we pray that this year and this day, in this kind of weird time between Christmas and New Year, Father, that you would pick up the pieces so that nothing is wasted. God, that you pick up the pieces of our lives and you make us into something new today. I hope you've had a great Christmas. I hope you have an amazing New Year and look forward to a fantastic 2021 with hope because God is doing something new in you. He has something for you to give to you. Embrace it this morning and embrace it as we go forward into this new year.
message, Tim, this morning. And I just want to encourage you as we close today that you are loved, that you are precious in God's sight and that people care about you. We care about you. If you need anything at all this Christmas time, please get in touch with us. We just want to send you our love and I'm just going to pray for you as we close. Father God, I thank you that you are a good and a kind God. I pray that people will have a real sense of your presence over this next week, that they will know that you are near. Father God, I pray that you would draw them close to you. God, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of your day and a great rest of the week and happy new year too. Thank you. <laughs>